Our first match review of the day comes to us from Dave, simply Dave, with 2k hours in Dead by Daylight, meaning that they have twice the amount of uh, hours that I expect most people to have the base fundamentals for macro and micro pressure in the game of Dead by Daylight. So uh, you are playing Nemesis, which is a fairly kind of like uh, on the stronger side, especially after his uh, recent buffs. Uh, still a time sink killer, which can kind of hurt him in a lot of ways. Uh, my expertise with this is not direct, but in, in the sense that I helped uh, Horser, who is uh, one of the best nemesises, nemeses <laughs> um, in the community, uh, write their guide. And also, um, yeah, I also help them sometimes with their uh, Whip Into Shape series, which is also excellent and helps you learn how to play every single map as nemesis. So... Got some recent information about that and good information about that. Uh, you are playing on Disturbed Reward, though, which is one of the worst killer maps uh, in the game. Up there with Batam, up there with Eerie of Crows. So uh, that is not going well in your favor. There's a very, very strong main building. Uh, probably one of the best balanced landing maps in the game. Uh, also a lot of really, really strong tiles. Also has that cubby issue that Groening Star else has, where there's cubbies that cut off your pressure. It's just kind of like a very poorly designed map. So let's take a look at your rounds and your perks. Okay, you're using the new Liquor Tongue, which is way better now, and uh, Marvin's Blood, so that's fine. Those are probably what you should be running. Uh, because, yeah, so like if you look at, here, I'll grab it for you, uh, these things down here. So like, Usually when you're playing a, a match of Dead by Daylight, let's say there's like a, a gen over here to the left or up uh, on top, like often spawns. And you as killer, you can go from the middle of the map to the left side of the map to up here to diagonally across. You can, you have freedom of movement here, essentially. Um, but when it comes to the cubbies, if you go into here to chase down this person working on a gen in this corner, and you see, say, a survivor or a gen nearly finished, like, in one of these two areas, you can't just cross over because there's literally a wall there. There's literally a wall here. So you would have to go around and back into this cubby and then around back into here and around back into here. So the freedom of movement is, like, extremely hindered. Extremely hindered. Um, so it's, like, it's a map design choice that, like, really harms killers. Oh, there's horse. Speaking of which, hey, Nemesis, you get to watch me be, be wrong. <laughs> True, I can take a 10 minute break. <laughs> are you present? Are you gonna help me? How available are you? Are you like doing nothing right now? Because I could just have you like co review this. I've done that before. I did it with Pixie once before. I've done it with Pinhead or Pinhead. Done it with. Oh, if you want. oh cool. Neat. <laughs> hey, woo! Guest review. Can we go to the bathroom? Okay, that's fine. So I get what I can say is I do know uh, perk picks. Um, so no way out. Good choice. It's one of your really, really strong non-slowdown perks. Um, but keep in mind, if you have one of the people decide to immerse for most of the game, that this will be like kind of rough because you won't get the most value if people are immersing. Um, I do see the synergy with Remember Me. Uh, Remember Me, while initially not a very good perk, does have good synergy with end game perks if you're going that route. Um, no way out in particular, because not only will the... Um, the doors be blocked for a while, but when they finally get on it, it's going to be slowed down. Unfortunately, uh, there's not. That's kind of where the synergy ends because Rancor, in a sense, is an end game perk because you just get to mori somebody out of the game. Uh, but Rancor and Game of Foot aren't really like. I, I get you're trying to do like Rancor roulette, but like Rancor is going to be this is going to be harmful. It's going to hurt some people's feelings. But like Rancor Roulette is a fun thing. It's not a good thing. <laughs> Rancor Roulette is silly, not fun or not. Not silly, not fun. It's silly and fun, but not good for consistent results. If you are running Rancor Roulette, you are like playing that for the fun of running the build and not because it will consistently get you result. Um, same thing with um, same thing with like if you were running like Devour Undying, right? Like the na by the nature of what you're doing, what you're, you're doing is like naturally inconsistent. Like it's just based on the, the survivors you face and the totem RNG. So it's 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 very like inconsistent and not something that I would run if you can if you care about winning. Ready? Okay. Um. So for the people at home, what are, what are your impressive stats? 
Um, oh, horse I'm the number two nemesis in the whole wide world for whip downs. I don't know the exact numbers, so I'm looking it up right now. I <laughs> wrote the nemesis guide. Um, it was a video. I'm like the nemesis creator, I guess. I'm at 25,743. Hold that bad boy. Should probably put the sound on, huh? That would help a little bit. So the main thing that you probably want to do, first off, find somebody as quick as possible, start getting that infection economy. Yeah, I am, uh, ever since the, like, Marvin's Blood buff, it's not even really worth bringing the zombie add-ons that I used to bring, like T-Virus samples, so I think the add-ons are good. Yeah, that's okay. why I, I, I told them their add-ons were good, because you used to be able to run that stuff, but, like, why not just run the new liquor tongue and Marvin's and all that? Okay, that was good. That is a fake you do want to make. It's like the exact thing I do. And he made the window, that's tragic. Um, he doesn't free drop, that's excellent for us. Well, awesome. Minor amount of whip drag, he wastes a pallet. You do not break that, excellent. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't really expecting him to go back over it, if I'm being honest with you. It seems initially they have a little bit of trouble with tracking, like you kind of like aren't predicting where they're going very well. Okay, that's, uh, you can hit up that ramp, by the way. With any range killer you can? Yeah. So in an ideal world, you would have thrown your whip up that ramp, and I think like leaving chase here is a good idea, especially yeah. with a zombie in the area. That's a very good whip drag. Amazing. Uh, you could hit up this again. Which is, it's a really important uh, hit to know as far as Nemesis goes on Crotus, because all the collision on this map kind of freaking sucks. Yeah. Like, you cannot hit over those little brick walls that are two feet tall, because behavior hates me. So. Yeah, so any projectile killer when they're going up those ramps on Disturbed Ward, like Huntress, yeah. Nemesis, if you have a projectile, throw it, because it will hit them. Pyramid Head? I don't believe so, because Pyramid, Pyramid Head's not, no. Pyramid Head's not really like a projectile. Like, in a sense, it's a ranged attack, but, like, it's not like something he's actively sending. It just kind of follows the floor out in front of him, whereas Nemesis is actually sending, like, a hitbox, like an actual projectile. It's technically four projectiles stacked on top, correct? Yeah, uh, Pyramid Head can go down terrain. It can't go up. Yep. So, yeah. How about fix this? I mean, you didn't even need to throw it up that because you just hit him over it regardless, so good job. I do disagree with leaving that chase, though. Yeah, because, like, this... Yeah, like, I don't know why you had... um, You had Ace, like, dead to rights there and you just leave for Jake. Yeah. Like, if you... Is, uh... If you were already in a situation where you had that hook... And you were trying to go from normally out stacks, maybe, but like you don't have anything yet, so. Yeah, you don't really uh, need to drop that chase. Uh, Nemesis has gotten since his buff. You don't really need to drop chases as often because you can hit tier two in your first chase now, so it's not even necessary. Which like, is very Jake nice. Life away, and you had Ace like is a pretty good chase, but like dropping your chase two times before you even have a hook is not a great thing to do because now ace is free to go off and get healed or do a gen or something and then you still don't even have pressure on the map yet like the zombie is chasing someone you can see it right there like it's not ace because ace went off to the left so that's somebody else and yeah like it's and you hear the gen in main like pretty close to done so you pretty much know where everybody is at this point in the game you're chasing Jake, uh, Ace went off to the left somewhere, someone's in main and someone's getting chased by that zombie. So, like, you have good info right now, but you do not want to leave that Ace chase, I would say. Uh, like, unless you, like, whipped Jake, like, unless Jake came around a corner, like, oops, and then you hit him for free, then, like, sure, and they were both injured, then sure, whatever, but probably not the best move. You should probably make this a redemption in your stream to do Nemesis reviews. You got I don't this down pat. To. You don't want to? You got this down pat, though. Yeah, but I don't want to. I'm going to play the killer. A shame. <sighs> but, like, wait, you. Okay, so, like, with Nemesis, you have the tentacle whip. People going into vaults is 
not something like well, on another killer like a melee killer yeah cut them off from the vault but like your nemesis ju- if he vaults in your face just tentacle whip him you do save a little time here and there are moments when i admittedly miss that because like uh windows that drop are a lot weirder with the hitbox because it falls a lot faster so like i probably would have made that play as well yeah because it's four tubes that descend right like a stair yeah. like almost like a staircase i would have faked it a lot uh like quicker though i think you did a little bit more time like this is like a very pedantic like you know you kind of saved like half a second here but you're getting the hit here regardless i'm sure so onwards Well, you want to enter tier three as quick as possible, typically. I like yeah. the idea. Uh, Craig could have cooked there, but he didn't. I don't like that window. That's one of my major pain points on this map, because it is also like enough of a drop that you can't really get a whip. Mm -hmm. The short board in general, especially the main building, is just really poorly designed. Yeah, I see it now because uh, we left Ace for two hooks down without a hook. Yeah, or this two is guns down. Sorry. You are a time scene killer, so you're going to have, like, kind of a rough start regardless a lot of the time. Which has been mitigated a lot by the recent buff, but, like, having a time sync killer also have a rough start is just kind of, like, a recipe for disaster. Yeah, it's not a great time when you lose two gens without a hook. Speaking from experience. Oof. And you just go, yeah, it's rough. Uh, what you want to do in that situation, if you're going for a whip over a pallet, is, like, Assuming you miss, you can still whip drag the hitbox into the pallet. So, like, if we go back here a little bit to where you did miss, admittedly, and admittedly, like, you don't even want to go for that whip. Like, he is way too far away, even at tier three. But uh, when you were trying to throw it over, like, and, you know, you realize you miss mid whip, you can still drag the lingering hitbox into the pallet and destroy it. <laughs> Like, I do respect the going for it, because you do, like, you know, there's no downside. If he's injured, contaminated, then it would go down from getting hit. Like, there's no downside to that, but the mastering the whip drag part into the pallet is very important. <sighs> Take a sip of water. I wasn't expecting to be talking as much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just like, well, if you're here, there's, there's nobody to give a better review than you in that situation. <sighs> One day, lightning will strike, like, in a bottle, and we'll have, like, a Revium be around during a trickster review maybe but not yet have you ever done a trickster review uh i've done a couple but like you know this may shock you but nobody really plays him in his terrible state <laughs> that's crazy i don't get it very often hashtag revert trickster nope yeah and like if you had just stuck on ace there at the beginning. You've already had a hook, which would create a lot of pressure for you. Playing a nice tune. Wow, you're at two gens. Ooh. Yeah, whip dragging though is probably gonna be your friend here. Uh, I don't know what sensitivity you play on. That was a really good hit. No one notes there. Why do you, okay, why are they split pressuring so much? Like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, you just contaminated Ace. You see a beam, for, like a little bit of a moth. Like you see a beam, you go right for it. <laughs> like I, I disagree with that play. I do. I would, honestly, I would say your play style constitutes more like zombie speed stuff. Because if you're going to be dropping chase as frequently as you do, you might want your zombies to be a bit more present. Because this build is kind of like, I want my power, I want to be the one doing everything, but the playstyle is more like, I kind of want to spread pressure a little bit. So maybe you could succeed running zombie add-ons more, like Shattered Stars badge or something? I don't know. I think at this point, a lot of your, like half of your build is like Rake of Roulette, which is a funny, silly thing. But half of your build requires build up. Like you got to put in the work to get stacks on those. And by split pressuring so much, you're not putting stacks on half your build, which means that you're essentially playing with two perks. <laughs> I mean, right now you have like no perks because. Yeah, Raycor is just giving it. info. So that's game it. foot is bugged. So like you're not even going to get the moves feed, even if they are the obsession. Mm -hmm. So 
I ooh, don't start me on Game of Foot. I hate that perk. <laughs> I was so mad it was obsession only. Cause like, okay, you do drop her. That was a good decision. Yeah, I don't recommend honestly going for hits like that unless you have like um I run like pretty much full auras. I run like uh what is it? I run like Grim Embrace, Lethal Pursuer, and then Floods of Rage. Admittedly, neither of these would help in this situation. But like you don't really want to go for window hits because you're gonna lose a lot of distance. I would say just do like the normal mind game, like walk out the shack slightly, you have your red stain, they look at the red stain, then you moonwalk to the window, turn around instantly, and then catch them at the window. Going for window hits isn't really something you want to do until you're like really experienced with the killer. And it's less of like a because I don't I don't hear very well. I'm going to be honest with you. It's more <laughs> of like a knowing what they're doing rather than like um, hearing them. Like you could even hear the Jake there not like being in position because he was holding a check spot waiting for you to do that because pulling out the whip does make a noise for them too. Yep. But what you would usually want to do, like, you did it really well during your first chase when you, like, kind of faked going one direction, then you instantly came back, vaulted it, and then he was right there in your face. He's like, oh, shit. And then, you know, you get him for free. And if you had, like, vault speed, you probably could have hit him at the window, too. But, you know, whatever. Bam might even be a good perk in your cards. I'm sick of that, yeah, because... Yeah, uh... I, I played a couple of games of comp tournaments and like BAM was just like in my build because like it sure it only shaved like another loop around Shaq off but that's the difference between getting a pallet, getting it down, getting pressure like etc. Et like it compounds you know. And even in general, you just like sometimes there's just like disturb boards. One of them, like you're kind of complaining about that window. Like they're like yeah. if you have BAM, it's just one loop. It's over, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly and abuse it so even characters like Zeno and nemesis that like really benefit from like anti-window play some windows like mother's dwelling has the chance to spawn both god windows <laughs> just, uh, wow okay <laughs> just at least shut down one please <laughs> oh yeah and like even at shack if they don't go for the window like you still have a guaranteed hit with nemesis because you can just like facing the pallet just drag your whip left even if the window's blocked and then they don't dodge it and then they get hit and then you're like woohoo free down it's nice. Yeah, it's one of those really, really rare things, Gek, but it can't happen. You can't spawn both, which is silly, but I... May not even be on purpose. May even be an accident. Oh, you should have strafed that. Uh, yeah, so if you want to pause there for a second, just because I've noticed something that's... Where you want to aim your whip is you want to aim on his left and pull it to the right, because that will be undodgeable. What you do, if you go outward, like inwards out, they can just strafe out and then dodge it, which, you know, he did. But if you start outwards, like right now, you should be holding A a little bit just so you can get like on his outside. And then you take the whip and you pull it in and then it's not dodgeable. Then he doesn't make the pallet. He doesn't make the shack. He doesn't keep going, etc., etc. Like uh, the whip drag. I'm I love saying with the whip drag the whip drag is like your bread and butter tool. Like this is the one thing you need to know how to do. Because this is one of the situations where you physically cannot miss once you, like, know the technique, and you did, because you didn't, you know? So you just, like, basically, you, you take your whip, and then you move in the direction you want it to move, because the hitbox lingers. It's like Xeno Strafe, but better. Which is not even an attack, it's just the truth, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think uh, what I was going to say, like... Um, because it's like it's so similar to the scene where if it's like when you're strafing with any character that has the ability to do so the idea most people treat as a baseline strafing is just okay well now I have more range like I cover more area with my hitbox you know um, no you gotta abuse that thing the the higher tier of thinking with that past that is I need to cover as many possible dodge options as I can with mm -hmm. the strafe it's why maps like RPD and the game are really good because they have um, hallways mostly. I mean, you can hit through a lot of stuff too, but the hallways thing is like you start at one side of the hallway, you drag the other side of the hallway, they can't dodge it. Like that is, you know, I win now, bye bye. <laughs> like, and like running tight along a wall is another one of those versions where you shouldn't be missing. Yeah, so not only should we strafe more just because it's better, but also. You know, you need to start thinking of it as well as 
I need to cover as many options that he might do in this allotted range that I have for the strafe. Yeah, exactly. Like, if they're along a wall, they only have one direction they can strafe, so if you cut it off, you just get the hit for free. Like, see, you just throw the whip, you don't strafe it at all. I think, you, I think a lot of people in you Nemesis... You can hit over that pallet into that corner, too. Yeah. And that's I... just like a thing where if you miss it, you hit the pallet regardless. Tier 3 at uh, uh, 1 gen is really bad, Ooh, yeah, too. Yeah, that's rough. That was kind of a strafe, but I don't think you did it on purpose. You gotta commit. Yeah, I don't know. Like, right there, I would have gone for ace. Like, I know Jake is the obsession. <laughs> Good job. Greg did it. Was that but, like, honestly, at this situation, I think he got distracted from, like, the plot. I would have still gone for Jake here. And that way you have, like, more pressure. And is this the god window, or...? Uh... You can, yeah, you can hit that still, but we've already talked about that. He's not even hooking at all. It's so weird. Yeah, he just gets picked out. Yeah. I think who I see a lot of nemesis, nemeses, uh, have issue Nemesis with. People. Yeah. <laughs> is that like, they're like, okay, well, my, my character has the ability to shred through pallets. So I'm just mm -hmm. going to like never go for shots over things or strafe or do this stuff because I can just, you know, shred the pallet and then keep chasing. And most is, of the time, time that's what you want to do though, because, um, that was reaction speed. But like, I, why are you leaving him? Oh, I mean, fair enough. But like, that shouldn't have missed. Like, yeah. I go for guillotines just because I'm confident with my whip, but like most of the time you don't really want to do that because it's like, it is an advanced whip drag type of thing. Okay, well we killed Jake here. Thank you, perk value. Very cool. <laughs> this is what I see a lot with Rinker Roulette too, is just like, I'm going to prioritize the one Mori over like winning the video game. Yeah, I um... Huh. But like the guillotine, which is, you know, whip drag, but you're falling downwards. Um, that's only really something you want to do. It's like an advanced whip drag, basically, which is, you know, still the bread and butter of something you need to learn how to do. And I don't know if we're quite at that level yet. So you probably could have gotten a. OK. Uh, yeah, she's <laughs> not very polite. <laughs> what is she doing? Her best. OK, fair enough. I want to say she's dead to rights here, right? She, I don't think she makes the door unless somebody shows up to body block. Yeah, she doesn't. And she hasn't been hooked, so no dead hard. Smile. <laughs> this is a little greedy. Yeah. I would say go for a contamination here, if anything, then go pick up Nia ASAP. Because we don't know where Ace is, so if it's is either opening the door and then Sable gets out for free. So, like, right here, you drop her and go for Nia. Now we're going to have a... Full healthy chase here, I guess. It was not ideal. Okay, but now you drop her on the second hit. Why do you do that? Okay, at least we get ace. Oh, and he becomes the obsession? Oh, and he's dead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, perk value, I guess. I'm kind of surprised the 2k happened, honestly. I think he just got unlucky. Yeah. If he hadn't had that much chase time up to that point, he would literally live there. Yeah. They should be out. Should be. Oh, except Nia's just standing here for some reason. Why? Is this yeah. just... Oh, yeah. that's so... You could've just 4 k Yep. She's just out now. This is funny because it's one of the match reads where like you 3k'd but you didn't win. Like by the yeah, scoreboard you like, won, but you played extremely poorly. Which is not an, an insult to you, but like you you literally just... She should have ran to the other door too. I don't know why she's doing this. And like, for, Okay. Like you get the 4k, but you like you just got lucky. Like you didn't... You didn't play well. 
is like all that happens here in this situation like the entire jake because he was the obsession then you found ace on accident who had the most chase time you made him the obsession you killed him you caught Nia, like, I will admit that was a good one. But then, like, Sable should have just left. Nia should have just left. Like, while you were morying, they should have gotten out. I don't know what they were doing. Yeah, they were messing around. So this is, like... <sighs> yeah, they should have been out. Even with Remember Me, they should have been out. Because you only had, yeah. like, what, like, two stacks because of that? It wasn't a yeah. lot. So, in terms of your main takeaways, um, you need to commit. So, like, you were trying to split pressure so much that you were actively doing nothing. Um, imagine if you had full stacks of No Way Out in this situation. Like, it, like this is even close. If you have all stacks of No Way Out. But, like, you just kept... You just kept, like, swapping back and forth between people and, like, hooking nobody. And... Just because you got the 4K doesn't mean, like, you played well. It doesn't mean it went as well as it could have. Like, hypothetically, in this situation, you could have 4K before they even touched the door. Because, like, I, I know I'm saying it a lot, but, like, learning the whip drag is very important. And, like, you are a relatively new... Ne I don't mean this is, like, an insult, I promise. Just, like, I am, like, the big cheese nemesis. You are a relatively <laughs> nemesis player because you're like P5, right? So it's important to... I'm going to say this. Honestly, going for whips that are bad just to see if you can hit them and learning your limits is really important to the character because like sucking at something is the first step to getting kind of good at something. Thank you, Jake the dog. <laughs> and like, you need to learn how to whip drag. I was in physical pain. Like... It, it is a technique. I'm not going to say it's like um, Wesker levels of I need to learn this technique, you know, like I have no idea how like Scooty and Alaran, etc. do what they do. I'm never going to learn that. Like that's insane. But Nemesis Whip Drag is just move to the side. <laughs> like it is not a difficult thing to do. It is not mm. rocket science, I promise. Like just throw the whip outside of them when they're hugging a wall and drag it to the inside and then you get a hit every time and then they say oh you cheater that and then whatever but like you need to whip drag is the biggest take and like stay on your first chase because you have marvin's blood you'd hit tier two anyway yeah hitting tier three that late in the game is like the whole idea is yeah. to hit tier three asap so the fact that you're at one gen just now Especially hitting tier three is wild Especially like now with Marvin's blood um, and the extra half a meter, which on, doesn't sound like a lot. It's like, you know, one twelfth extra of what we used to have. But it is a big deal to hit tier three. Because like that extra half meter, ooh, that's when you really start limit testing. Like it took me a few weeks, like after the update to be like, oh, oh, I can hit that now. Okay, thank you. And like it kind of is more like seven meters realistically because you can also whip drag a forward and you are technically the same speed as a survivor so like you can eat like you know if they're outside of six and a half like a 6.6 .6, you don't just instantly miss but uh yeah uh main takeaways um tldr uh learn to whip drag like, you did a couple good ones. I'm not going to, like, completely just shit on you. Like, there were a, a couple of good whip drags there. Um, learned whip drag. Uh, stay in chases. Like, that is the whole point of Liquor Tongue, is to be stickier to chases. Because you slow them by, like, 20% for three seconds. Like, that's the whole point of the add-on, is you contaminate them, you keep going. And then, if you use your power more, it has a lower cooldown than your punch. So like uh, even punching Jake at the um, at the little ramp thing out of main, I wouldn't have done that personally. Like you could have dropped down, then like whipped to his left and then dragged it right. He physically could not dodge it. You recover quicker. You get the down quicker. You get the pressure, etc., etc., etc. Like Nemesis is a lot of compounding interest, I guess. So yeah, uh, stick to targets, whip drag them. Don't go for guillotines until you're really confident with the whip drag, I would say. My last one that I'm going to add for the third and final takeaway is for this yes. player in particular, is that what you were doing is no different than somebody running no ed and saying they get good results. Yeah. 
what you like just because they totem pops up at the end of the game and now you have exposed everybody and you get some extra kills does not mean you played well it's a it's a mistake eraser which is why i don't recommend people to run no ed for the match reviews because it's like well i got a two or three k well yeah it's because a perk said so not because you played well yeah because no it isn't even revealed until you hit somebody and like rancor technically but like with game of foot you maybe could have hit it a bit better if they weren't paying attention but I'd say after the first Mori, and then the game of foot, and then the second one, they're like, okay, we should leave. Yeah, and the fact that they still played as greedy as they did when they realized, you know... A, you were a, killing people. Uh, it was just a mistake on their part. Honestly, and I'm not saying this to, like, in any way condescend, but, like, if Sable is at that door by Shaq and not Ace there, you do get three outed here. Yeah. Like, if the wrong cause... person is at that door... That is, if that does a game of foot Miller, switch. Like, you just, like, they don't die, you get three out of GG. So, so I would, for this player in particular, I would not run Rancor game of foot if you're looking to improve at the game, because... Like, I would say slowdown, if anything, not just because it's good, but because slowdown gives you, you know, more time to play the game and more time to practice per game. And, like, it is obviously good, like, you need slowdown to start competing at higher MMRs type deal, because everyone is, like, on it, but mm -hmm. uh, if you don't go for stuff and experiment, you're never going to know your limits, and then you're never going to really improve if you don't fail. So, uh, swap out the build, go for whips that might not hit, you might surprise yourself. Yeah. Because that six and a half meters is deceptive. <laughs> It's what? real good. Well, that was excellent. That was great.